So for the stoichiometry number two, it starts with saying balance the reaction. So under the reaction, I'm going to put the different elements. So I have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And I'm going to count how many I have of each atom on each side. So for carbon, I have four on the reactant side. I have 10 hydrogen, two oxygen. On the product side, I have one carbon, two hydrogen, and three oxygen. All right, so I'm just gonna start. It's okay, four here, that'll make it four carbon, but I've also changed oxygen, so four times two is eight, plus one is nine. So at this point, if I put a five in front of the hydrogen, then that's going to leave my oxygen as an odd number. And if I have an even number over here, I can only ever have an even number. So I'm gonna say, okay, I know that's not gonna work. So since I know it's gonna have to change, this will, um, as a not a five, I know I'm gonna have to change this too. So I'm going to stop that. I'm gonna put a two here, put an eight, 20. All right, the reason I chose a two is because it was already a one and I, was, I knew it was gonna change. So I was like, okay, let's start with two. So at that point, I would put an eight here. So that would give me eight carbon. Eight times two oxygen would be 16 plus one is 17. Okay, now I'm gonna try and balance my hydrogens. So if I multiply this by 10, so 10 times two is 20, those are balanced. And now I've changed my oxygen, so 10 times one is 10. And when I add those together, I get a total of 26. And so on this side, I need to multiply this two by 13 to get 26. So eight and eight, 20 and 20, 26, 26. So it's two, 13, eight, and 10. So I have balanced my equation. Now, when 0 0.750 moles of oxygen are reacted, how many moles of carbon dioxide are produced? All right, so I know that I have, I'm starting off with moles of oxygen. So oxygen would be my given. And so it's wanting to know how many moles of carbon dioxide. So that's the unknown. And so it's actually a one-step problem. I'm gonna go from moles of the given to moles of the unknown. And I do that using my mole to mole ratio. The numbers that I get from that, I use the coefficients from the balanced equation. So when I set this up, I'm gonna put the given first. So 0 0.750 moles of oxygen. So that's my given, it goes here every time. And then I know that my next step, what's gonna go here based off of my stoichiometry island diagram is the coefficients. But before I add numbers, I'm gonna say, okay, I know I wanna cancel out my moles of oxygen. I'm trying to get to moles of carbon dioxide. So I've set this up so that I have everything canceled the way that it's supposed to. And now I'm gonna add my numbers and I get those from my balanced equation. So moles of O2 is 13. Moles of CO2 is eight. So that's the last step. So I multiply across the top um, which when I multiply 0 0.750 times 8, I get 6. Multiply across the bottom, which is just 13. And then I divide and get 0 0.462 moles of carbon dioxide. And that's my answer. For the third part, how many grams of propane are needed to produce 5.7 moles of water? Okay, so if I look at my stoichiometry island diagram, I know that I'm going from moles of the given to grams or mass of the unknown. All right, so my given is 5.7 moles of water. So I'm starting in moles of water. So the first step is going to go from moles to moles of propane or its butane. And that, so that first step goes using the mole to mole ratio with the coefficients for my balanced chemical equation. So I'm gonna put my given 5.7 moles of water here. 
So now I'm going to convert to moles of the unknown, which is propane. So moles of water is on top. I'm going to put moles of water on the bottom. Moles of propane on top. Moles of propane on top. The numbers that go with them. So for water, I'm going to say 10. And for propane, I'm going to say 2. Moles of water. Moles of water. All right, so I've done that first step, but I'm trying to get to grams. Now that I'm in moles of butane or propane, um, the next step I wants me to get to the grams or the mass. And so this last step I do going from moles of the unknown, which is propane or butane, to the mass or grams. And I do that using the molar mass, which is given in grams per mole. So I'm going to add another step here. And since I have moles on top, I'm going to put the moles on bottom. Molar mass is always grams per mole. And they don't always have, they can be flip-flops. It just depends on what you're canceling out. So since I'm canceling out moles, it goes on the bottom. And the molar mass of propane, which this is actually not propane, it's butane. So that's my bad. Um, if I have the mass of carbon times 4 plus the mass of hydrogen times 10, I'm going to get... 58.12 grams per mole. So I have got to the mass, and so now it's time to solve it. So I'm going to multiply across the top. So 5.7 times 2 times 58.12, and I get 662.568. Multiply across the bottom, it's just 10 times 1, so 10. So when I divide, my answer is going to be 66.257 grams of butane, or propane is what the question asked for. Okay. Last step. <clears throat> what volume of oxygen gas is needed to react with 2.75 grams of propane? So I'm going from, if I look at my stoichiometry island diagram, I'm going to go from the mass of the known to the volume of the unknown. Great. So we're starting off with grams of butane. So that's the mass of our given. So the first step in trying to get to a volume is to go from the mass of our given to the moles of our given, which is butane using the molar mass. So you're actually going to use the same molar mass that you used in the last problem to go from mass to moles. All right, so when I set that up, say here's my given, 2.75 grams. Again, this is butane, not propane. We use the molar mass. It's the same molar mass I used up here, but since I'm trying to cancel out grams, this time the 58.12 grams goes on the bottom per mole. So that my grams cancel. All right, so I've done that first step. Now that we're in moles of the given, we want to get to moles of our unknown, which is oxygen in this case. So we do that using the multiple ratio, and you get those coefficients from your balanced chemical equation. So I'm trying to cancel moles of butane. So it's going to go on bottom. I'm looking for oxygen, so moles of oxygen goes on top. Remember, I'm doing this step by step, so I'm not looking for moles of oxygen. I want to get to the volume, but I have to take it each step using my diagram. The numbers that go here, I get from my balanced equation, so 2 and then 13. So moles, butane, moles, butane, that's canceled. So now that you're in moles of your unknown, or oxygen, you want to find out the volume using this constant at standard pressure and time. To go from moles to volume, you'll have 22.4 liters per one mole. And you do that using this constant, which is 22.4 liters per mole. Again, I put the liters on top and the moles on bottom just so that the moles will cancel. And that's my last step. So now I can actually work the math. I multiply across the top. So 2.75 times 13 times 22.4. And I get 800.8. .8. Multiply across the bottom, 58.12 times 2. I get 116.24. 
and when I divide, I'm gonna get 6.89 liters of oxygen. And that's my answer.